Hi, this is Tom Cherryums with the Fujinet Project, and I wanted to announce that NOS version 0.6 is now available on apps.errata.online. But what is NOS, and why would you want to use it? If we think about it, most of the time when we have our Atari computers, we have a disk drive and we use some sort of DOS or disk operating system with it to allow us to access files stored on disk. With NOS, however, what we do is replace the disk device with a network device that can talk to any network endpoint and allow you to access files and information in the same way. And the purpose of this video here is to show you a little bit of what NOS is and why you would want to use it. To do that, we have a setup here of an emulated Atari in Altera. It has a FujiNet connected to it, and uh, we have it booted up here. On the right-hand side, we have the Atari, and on the left-hand side, we're going to have various different windows that I will take and bring in to show network resources from the PC side of things, so you can see how the two are connected. So, how do we boot NOS in the first place? The best way is to go to apps.errata.online go into the Atari 8-bit folder, go into the DOS folder, and to select NOS here from the list of Atari disk operating systems that are also available. And we'll go ahead and we'll boot. Now, the other thing that we've done here is I have an action cartridge also placed here in my machine because we're going to be using it to do some of the examples here. But I will go ahead and go into the monitor and I will go to the DOS prompt by hitting Control Shift M to get into the monitor and press D, which will bring us to the NOS prompt. For those that are familiar with DOS XL and Sparta DOS, this may look familiar. However, instead of a D1 prompt here, we have an N1 prompt. Now what has happened here, instead of booting a disk handler, like we do with Atari DOS 2.0, DOS XL, and etc., we boot the N handler all by itself. There is no D handler here at all. NOS does not know how to deal with disk drives or the file systems that are stored on them. What is loaded instead is just the end device by itself. And all we use the disk drive for, in this case the FujiNet virtual disk drive for, was to boot the NOS into place because the Atari operating system ROM knows how to do that. If we uh, we can, of course, use the help command here. And NOS comes with a big help system that you can use to see how to use NOS in the first place. It's the first place you should go if you have a question. And all you need to do is enter in a topic. For example, help NOS, which will give you a list of commands that you can use in NOS. The viewer that's used by this and the type command is paginated, so you can press the enter key or space key or any key whatsoever to take and display the next page. And you can see these are the commands that we currently have available. Honestly, the one thing that's missing at this moment is the, a copy command, but we will add it in soon enough. You can see that we have all sorts of commands to do things like creating directories, making directories, jumping to cartridges, switching the basic on and off, and so on. But if we try, let's say, for example, we want to get more information on a particular topic, we can do the topic with a slash followed by the command that we want to get more information about. For example, the basic command.
And there are many other interesting topics that are also available here that are being added on as we speak. For example, we can look at memory maps. This was transcribed in from mapping the Atari. Or reference material. And all of this, ironically, is being pulled straight off of the NOS repository on GitHub. So as we add more content, it will automatically become available. It's being pulled off of the network into the FujiNet and into your Atari computer. There we go. Help will allow you to get acclimated to the NOS as quickly as possible. Now, the first thing you might want to try to do is a directory command. And you'll notice it comes back with a, an error 165, which is invalid device spec. But you might be thinking, wait a minute, I just booted from the NOS disk. Wouldn't there be a directory on it? No, there would not be. The only thing that's on the NOS disk that you boot from FujiNet is the end handler itself and the command processor. That all gets loaded in in one big chunk and then it passes control to it. It's a bootloadable program. There is no file system, so there's nothing to do, a, to do a directory on. In order for us to get a usable directory, we have to point the various end devices, of which there are four of them, N1 to N4, we point them to a location. To do that, we use the cd command. And we can do, for example, I will point this to my uh, TNFS server here called TMA2, which is this window over here on the left-hand side. It actually points to my workspace folder. And now if we actually take and do a directory, we'll see that it matches up with what we see on the left-hand side here. This is actually very useful for me, especially as a software developer, because it means I can do things like make changes to a particular piece of software. I can build it and I can see the results. I have my workspace folder in my terminal on the left-hand side. And I have a folder that contains a little bit of assembler here for a logo that I did for Abuk. Several versions, in fact. It's all in assembler. And I can take and go in and modify it, do certain things. And then when I'm done, I can build it. It builds it and immediately do the results over here. Let me, oh, there we go. Habak logo. We'll see it right there. And I can go pair set version. I can pull into here and there is logo 2XEX. I can load that directly. So there, we've taken something, I assembled it, and then I ran it directly from the TNFS server without needing to put it onto some sort of ATR disk image. It's much more simplified than the need to take and have to package it up into a disk image, then have to mount that disk image to see the results. It's much more immediate. But you can go even further. Let's take, and instead of pointing to my TNFS server, let's actually take and point to a web server, for example. I'll take and bring a web browser window over here where we have an HTTP mirror of ftp.pigwa.net all the way over here. And I could just as easily do this in FTP or HTTP because this particular server has both of them exposed publicly. But I'm going to take this now, I'm gonna copy this link here, and I'm gonna paste it in as arguments to the CD command right here.
I'm going to remove the index.html because I don't really want it here. And you could leave the slash or you could take it away. It really doesn't matter. And now I am literally going to take, if we take and scroll down here for a little bit, right now this particular web server does not have web dev extensions. If it did, it would support the prop find command, and I could literally just take and do a directory at this point and get this over here. But it doesn't, so I have to talk with the files directly. Not a problem. I can, for example, we have uh, right here, we have frog.act right here. And it has pulled that file directly off the web server. and converted it so that it can be dealt with here inside the FujiNet directly. Okay. But I can go a bit, I can go even further. If I wanted to take and load that directly into my action cartridge, which is actually in here, it's one of the reasons that there's a gray border when we went into NOS here. That lets us know that there's a cartridge inside the unit. We can go back into the editor and I can read frog.act from the end device. There we go. I can do it like here. I can t I can pull it in, I can edit it. Maybe I need to take and save a copy of it over onto my uh, onto another place. Well, we can do that. I'll go out and go back out to the monitor real quick. And I will go to the DOS prompt here. And it looks like I need to just hold on. There we go. Let me change back to lowercase. And I'm going to take and pull up another network resource right here. And this is my uh, Windows file share. It's SMB, and it's a, a resource called public. I'll take and set that to drive in two. And I will set that to SMB. Uh, dot online public. And we'll see right here that we are now dealing with directly my Windows, uh, my Windows file server right here directly. I can write, read to it. I can write to it. It's pretty transparent in that regard. So now, I can go back. We can see that my file is still in the editor. I can write frog act out to And you can see the file growing right here. So now it's written that file out. And if we wanted to, we could take and read it back in from the Windows file share. It really doesn't matter here. But you've seen me just take and transfer something from a web server all the way over here in over here in Poland and bounce it all the way to my Windows file server over here. So I can read to it, I can write to it, I can modify it, do whatever. It it just works. It's extremely transparent. So now we can go ahead and for the, let me go back to DOS here. If I wanted to, you can see that there is actually, in addition to the frog source code right here, there's also an executable right here. Well, I can load that. The path is in the right place. So let's just go ahead and load it. Go back. Sorry, not frog, I uh, ACT execute.
and there it is right there i've loaded that i've loaded that game directly off of the web server here it doesn't matter if it's a uh what protocol it is the end device will take and convert it across so that the atari can understand it and the end device uh, will take and do all the necessary communication back and forth to make sure that everything is a nice clean io channel and there are already a lot of protocols supported. In fact, if we actually take and pull my Visual Studio Code window over here to the side here for a second, we can look inside the Network Protocol folder and we can see some of the protocols that we have supported. We have FTP, we have HTTP, we have SD, so you can read the SD card slot on a file-by-file -file basis. SMB for Windows File Shares, SSH for talking to SSH servers, uh, raw TCP connections, Telnet connections, TNFS, UDP, and the challenge going forward here is adding more protocols so that we can take and talk to more network endpoints. Imagine being able to, for example, talk directly to uh, a Google Drive directory. Not a problem or talk to Dropbox, or to some other file sharing protocol that we haven't even dealt with yet. All of this is possible, and the, and the, muscle, uh, and the muscle that's on uh, the ESP32 can do all of the necessary transformations. Not only that, but we could actually add an additional layer inside of here to take and also peer into file systems. So we could take and mount file systems, ATR images that contain file systems inside, or CPM images, or uh, IBM PC disk images, whatever. It doesn't matter. If there's a file system in here, it could be translated. So there's a lot of wonderful work here that's still left to be done. I think I will go ahead and leave it off right here, but I hope this really kind of starts to put into your head that you don't need a disk operating system anymore with the FujiNet. You can actually peel that away and let the FujiNet take care of abstracting uh, the modern internet and bringing it into a form that the Atari can use directly either as a uh, character-based endpoint or as some sort of file system endpoint. Hopefully this will get us thinking. So um, anyway, until next time, guys. Have fun.